belongs to a friend of mine, right. and it was inherited by her late husband in 1940s, and I presume it had been in the family for quite a long time. Quite a long time. That's all I know. Be interesting to see how far back in that family. It has that look of something that's been in a, in a home for a long I time. I think it You know, that sort of, yes. sort of aura about yes. it. Yes. It's just a cupboard with, when you look closely, some oval panels in the door, a fairly shallow bow front, and you could actually walk past it. You know, it's yes. not, it doesn't stand and say something until you do stop and look. And then one starts to realize that these oval panels are in the center of a rectangle which has this lovely mitered corner of veneer. And when you start to look at that, you realize that this is not it just ain't any veneer, this is satin wood, which was an extremely expensive, exotic veneer from the last quarter of the 18th century, when we first started to import it and use it. But it is the most expensive sort, which, ironically, was unstable. So a man was using this almost in the knowledge that, with time, it would crinkle really? and crack. Here, he had to put a piece in, and if you come to the top, you'll see these wonderful, almost dark as a conker look to, to this, uh, almost a chestnutty colour, and yet it's this rippling, deep satin wood effect, deep satin effect. A little bit of damage to the top with the watermark, but that's cosmetic. Now, you then come to the oval panels themselves, and they are bordered and delineated with rosewood, a thin piece of ebony and a thin piece of boxwood to give it a black-white line. You see that repeated on there. There's a good example here. That goes all the way around. When this was new, the satin was bright yellow, pale yellow and dark, and then black, white, and then this grain satin wood around the outside forming cross banding. Now, at the end of the 18th century, there were two designers of furniture in the classic style, both Hepplewhite, George Hepplewhite, and Thomas Sheraton. Sheraton is the name that would come to mind largely because of the use of the satin wood. When we open this, here you have what could be straight out of Hepplewhite's drawing book, rather than Sheraton, the use of mahogany inside here with two drawers, which are 1775, 1795 in period, and in shape, with a cock bead, original handle, and then for ultimate use, you have adjustable slides. Faced up with mahogany, the back of which is pine. Absolutely traditional. And there it is, simplicity itself, but total use. So what at first looks like, just a nice, well-designed cabinet or cupboard, is in fact an exceptional piece of furniture. So goodness knows, this was made by an important maker. It could be someone like Inson Mayhew. It's as good as that. It's, it, it's really quite remarkable. If one went into a, a good gallery where you'd have to go to buy such a piece as this today, you'd have to give between 25 and 30,000 pounds. Well, I think she'll be rather stuck. I hope she'll be pleased with it.